In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning and a very warm welcome to St Michael's as we come together to praise God and also to send Helen and Charlie on their way and to give thanks for them and all that they have contributed to this parish over the last two years. I do hope that you are able to stay for coffee and cake after the service. Um, we will give you a chance to individually say goodbye to them. We continue now with our prayer of preparation. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ, reconciling the world to yourself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love, 
that all who hear it may be drawn to you through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses prepares the children of Israel for entrance into the promised land. Moses spoke to the people. He said, So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so it may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God, with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely, this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting out before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. Thanks be to God. second reading is from the letter of James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfilment of his purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creation. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word are not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. It's time to sing our next hymn, number 238, in the Red Books.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it, and there are also many other traditions that they observe. They, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honours me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human percepts of doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand there is nothing outside a person that is going in, that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evils come from within and they defile a person. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's pray. Lord, we welcome you in this place. We pray that our hearts be open to your message this morning. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Hello and welcome to our Sunday service and welcome to everyone joining us online. If we haven't met already, my name's Helen and for one final service, I'm the Youth and Children's Minister here at St Michael's. I love this piece of scripture. I love Mark's gospel. He is straight to the point. When I read this, the thing that I got out of it was that Jesus is here was teaching about rules and relationship. As some of you may know, my husband Charlie and I uh, have moved to Worcester, which is the place that I grew up. And I wanted to begin with a short story. So in one of our local villages, we have a pub called The Camp. And it's a beautiful old pub nestled down a long single track road right next to the River Severn. And this place draws people from all around. It's known for its scrumpy cider. <laughs> it was actually my first place of work. So I was a waitress, which was a nice, easy job, as I didn't have to take any orders. I just had to take the food from the kitchen to the people. One day, I was asked to jump onto the bar, as it was, well, not literally, <laughs> jump behind the bar, as it was, um, it was a busy day. The farmers were finishing the day, and they would be coming in soon. And person after person came up to the bar and they'd say, usual please, one scrumpy with a gold top, one half and half, two cobs and a packet of salt with an egg. <laughs> huh? <laughs> you see, this particular customer, they liked their scrumpy with an inch of fatuous gold on top. And it was to be in a mug, not in a glass. And the half and half was to be served in a straight glass. Two cobs were a baguette and they, they wanted their ready salted crisp to be opened and a pickled egg placed inside. Talk about rules. <laughs> and customer after customer, they all had their specific orders, their glasses, the chairs that they sat in, the food arrived in their desired times. And if you broke those rules, well, Farmer Jim would not be happy. It's safe to say I struggled to follow these rules and therefore my relationship with many of the customers failed as well. But in my defense, there was an awful lot to remember. So in today's reading, we hear that Jesus' disciples were not washing their hands. 
a tradition that was set out by the elders. And it's important to understand the context of this reading. So these weren't just traditions. In a time where the Jewish people were under constant threat by the Roman authorities, these rules helped to define them. It helped them to feel in control of their lives and to keep them safe. So by the time Jesus was preaching in Galilee, the traditions had ru and rules had grown from the time of Moses and there were traditions piled on top of traditions. And these weren't just about washing your hands and saying your prayers before bed. Some of these traditions isolated people, people who were different, there were people who were ill, people who gave birth to a boy instead of a girl. The rules acted as barriers to relationships and they were held in such high, high regard that it would believe that if you would break them, then it would affect your relationship with God. Therefore, they were non-negotiable. So Jesus was different. He was countercultural. And I want to draw on one of the things that he said. He said, you abandon the commandments of God and hold to human traditions. He goes on to say, there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. So my question this morning is, are we interested in rules or are we interested in relationships? So I've been doing youth and children's work for over a decade now in various different working environments. And I often get asked, why do you do it? So in a world that often tells the younger generations, don't do this and don't do that, I want to be someone that says yes to them. Someone that throws out a Bible study I've prepared because they just want to play games and chat. Someone who giggles when the toddler wanders down the aisle during the prayers. Someone who helps parents when their young one is fidgeting and they need an, another space to take them. Jesus was all about relationships. In a culture and a society where they had rules for everything, he came and said, no, that's not what it's about. He ignored them and healed people on the Sabbath. He protected the adulterous woman. He pulled up a chair and ate with tax collectors. And as we read this passage, we should be asking ourselves, are we rule followers? Or are we relationship builders? Casting back to the pub I worked at, I said how everyone had their chair and their place and their orders. And I'm sure you've been to similar places where if you were a new person, everyone stares at you. I've seen people leave almost immediately after entering that pub because of how they were made to feel. So Jesus goes on to quote the prophet Isaiah. He says, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Relationship over rules. That's who Jesus was. And that's who he calls us to be. But it is also important to remember that Jesus and his father, they did set out the commandments so he wasn't saying, abandon everything. <laughs> we all need rules and we all need boundaries. However, he is saying the rules that we live by are rules of inclusion rather than exclusion. Matthew 22, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. John 13, love one another. Matthew 5, be patient. Matthew 6, forgive others. These are the rules and the commands we are to live by because these are the ones that are about relationship. On behalf of Charlie and I, I would like to thank you that you have shared the love of Christ with us. You have welcomed us, included us and made us feel, feel part of the family even though we might not quite stand up or sit down at the right time. <laughs> and often we turn around and ask where we are in the order of service. 
We're so glad to have a relationship with you, even if we didn't always follow the rules. It's been a privilege to serve you. Amen. 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 Bless you, Helen. Thank you so much for your word. And I guess all of us are are not always sure of the rules when we go somewhere new. And even when we've been somewhere lots of times before, I quite often stand up at the wrong moment as well. So there we are. Please feel free, everyone. So we now stand and say together the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our prayers of intercession. Heavenly Father, hear us as we lift our hearts in thanksgiving and praise, and hear our prayers and intercession for all those in need. Help us to be aware of your presence and hear your voice, and make us always ready to obey and do your will. Almighty God, we thank you for your church throughout your world. And thank you for the fellowship of our church family here at St. Michael's. As we gather once more in this house of prayer, may our worship not only honour you with our lips, but also with our hearts and minds. We thank you for all who minister here. And this morning, we especially give you thanks for Helen and her ministry with our youth and children both here at St. Michael's and in our local schools. We ask that you continue to nurture and guide her in her move a new job in Worcester. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring before you the divided world. Break through all barriers with your love and reconciliation. We pray for the peoples of the world, especially today we remember the children, women and men of Afghanistan. We pray for all who seek, who fear for their lives and their futures, and for those who seek refuge, especially those who are coming to build new lives among us. 
Be with the leaders of all nations. May peace grow in places of hatred and hope grow in places of despair. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, as we rejoice in your love, we remember our loved ones, our homes and families, and pray for our community and neighbourhood. We thank you for the school holidays, for the chance to reconnect with family and friends, possibly for the first time since the outbreak of the coronavirus. Be with all those who feel lonely or uncared for, for those who have no family or loved ones to support them. May your peace and love surround them, bringing with it comfort and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who minister to the sick and infirm, both at home and in hospital. We remember the chronically sick, those in constant pain, the depressed and weary, and the despairing. We bring before you those on our parish prayer list, naming Gordon Ryle, Carolyn Johnson, Heather Morgan, Barbara Walton, Trevor B, Susan Beecham, Carol Sampson, Tanya Taylor, Nona Harrison, Babs White, Joe Spencer, Judy Wright, Ken Palmer, Maureen Shelley, Anne Mayo, Russell Beard, Ali Millwood, Carol Allen, Mari Hammond, Pat Freskin, Alfie Dyson, and John Quinn, and in a moment silent, those known to us alone. May they all experience the light of the gospel and a real sense of your healing spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them, for members of our families who have died and whose anniversaries we recall. And we remember Rudy, Ruby Panett and Godfrey Simmons. Be with those who mourn and open their minds that they may find hope and the will to carry on despite the heaviness of heart they are now experiencing. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Holy God, we thank you for this time of prayer and intercession and ask for the blessing of your presence in the week ahead. We pray that you will guide us, guard us, and keep us, keep us safe in all we do and say. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand? We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. And our next hymn is number 235.
Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. praises heavenly father through your son our saviour jesus christ and as we follow his example and obey his command grant that by the power of your holy spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Set through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. 
keep you in eternal life. Amen.
We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God, our Creator, you feed your children with the true manna, the living bread from heaven. Let this holy food sustain us through our earthly pilgrimage until we come to the place where hunger and thirst are no more. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, died with his grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we have some bands of marriage. I publish the bands of marriage between Philip William Alexander Atwood of this parish and Charlene Smith of this parish. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. And this is for the third time of asking. Let us pray. Father, we pray for all those who are soon to be married. May their joys and hopes be realised. Be with them as they make their plans and give them patience and understanding when things are challenging. And we also pray for those who are having anniversaries at this time. We thank you, Lord, for all of our relationships. Help us to grow closer to each other as we grow closer to you. In Jesus' name, Amen. And so, a couple of notices. On Saturday the 11th of September, in the parish centre, is the cream tea, which will run from 2.30 until 5 o'clock. Hoping to have a cake stall again, everyone most welcome as will offers and help and cakes. Um, also on that day is the Ride and Stride, Saturday the 11th. Um, Hank and others will be riding around local churches to raise money for Dorset Historic Churches and half the money raised will also go to St Michael's Church. If you'd like to sponsor them, please hand donations into the parish office. Um, there's a a television, a Samsung 32 inches, um, available for a donation to the parish. If anyone's interested, um, please again speak to. Oh no, there's a number there. Has everyone seen this? It's online, but if, if you're interested, please do come and tell me, and I will give you the telephone number to phone if you're interested in that. And the ma mahogany dining table also free and will deliver. Again, if you're interested, please um, come and ask me. And Pat would like to thank everyone who attended the cream teas in her garden and raised £90 for church funds, so that's good news. And on the 4th of September, from half past 10 to half past 11, is a come and see laptop training session. 
So I urge you to go along to that um, and find out how, how it works. Um, it will be used for the new evening service together at six, um, but coming along doesn't commit you to be running it. But obviously, if you came along and thought it was great fun, then it would be great if you would come and help out to, to run it at the um, six o'clock service. And that six o'clock service is launching on the 12th of September, so that's very close now. Um, please put it in your diaries and come along and support that launch. It would be lovely to have a group of, well, a lot of people there um, as we begin that evening service. Have I got everything? Yes, as I said earlier, please do stay and have a coffee um, and a piece of cake. Um, okay, so perhaps um, now is the moment to ask Helen to come out. Um, Anthea, would you like to begin? So that's another little present oh, from all of us, thank you. Um, donated by everybody. Oh, thank you. So you're very welcome. You. And now, um, just actually, if you go around the other side, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to put my mask on. <laughs> so Helen, may God shield you on every step of the way. May Christ keep you in every path, and may Spirit bathe you in every pass. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted and honour all people. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. God be with you as you journey on. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. God bless you. And now we're going to have that beautiful blessing sung by Sue and Lily. This is for all of us, but in particular for Helen. We have, we have the words as well. If you look in your... We can join in.
Thank you. Would you please stand for the final blessing? The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love and care for, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.